Welcome back everyone, Toysius here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another news update. Got a lot of new Marvel Legends figures revealed this morning via the Hasbro Pulse YouTube channel. We got a lot to talk about. Very excited to talk about, so we're just going to jump right into it. But I do ask that if you are new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Now, we're going to kick it off because Ryan, Dwight, and Dan, once again, joining us on their YouTube channel to tell us all about the brand new Marvel Legend reveals. And briefly, they went over Galactus. Big thank you, over 33,000 and change backers of Galactus. Pretty cool, all the unlocks, everything, the whole shebang. So we'll be getting Galactus come next year, and Dwight, of course. Curtainless Dwight, right? That's no fun. <laughs> Showing off the Galactus and the Sentinel as well. They briefly went over the fact that starting tomorrow, and much like everything, as always, depending on when you see this video, I will have the links for the pre-orders down in my description below. So, in advance, thank you so much for using my links. But yeah, everything should go up in and around 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. tomorrow, and that will be September 14th. But... First and foremost, the Hasbro Pulse exclusive, this is the Excalibur set, will go up. It's going to be Hasbro Pulse members only. So for the Excalibur set, for the Scroll Army Builder, and then for the Shield Army Builder, again, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. East tomorrow. Only These are only on the Pulse Premium membership channel thing. <laughs> Members get it first, and then at 2 p.m. Eastern, everybody else uh, gets dabs at it. So good luck if you need them. And then Dwight also did make a quick mention that they have about five or so comic book army builders penciled in here and there, but then they're also considering MCU army builders as well. So no other info besides just the throwaway line under that and then moving into the big reveals this is where i get all like "Ooh, here we go they're talking about spider-man the animated series retro card editions and we got our first reveal last week from just jay hernandez be sure to check out his youtube channel does some great stuff he got to reveal the i call it the alien suit the alien costume right because it was the alien costume saga now it's called the symbiote spider-man and yes I do call it the Symbiote Spider-Man as well, but it's always going to be the alien costume because that's what it was called back in the day. So that looks pretty great, I have to say. I have so many alien costumes, so many Symbiote suits, Spider-Mans, but this one does look cool. I mean, of course, it's on the Spider-Man retro card, and he does come with a bevy of extra hands and such. Now, you can say... Yes, this is the animated series one. It just doesn't have the blue. And that's something I really like about the Red Hulk bath wave from way, way back. They had the blue sort of tinge to it. And I really, really still love that one. But you could say, yes, this is the cloth suit. He doesn't have the dots, but it says the animated because he didn't have the dots. So we're just going to say this. It's whatever you want it to be at this point. But... The alien costume symbiote suit is coming for the Spider-Man the Animated Series line. And then this one, I was like, oh baby, heck yeah. We're going to be getting the Mark Hamill Animated Series Hobgoblin figure. Now, I do have some things to say about this. While it does look great, and I'm glad they did not go with the scales and they kept it just the flat mat. I definitely like that little touch. I really wish we would have gotten a better head sculpt on this one. I think that it matches the comic book one as far as the tenacity and the sheer enjoyment that you see on the Hobgoblin's face for Spider-Man the Animated Series. I really wish they would have done just a new head sculpt for him, right? Love the pumpkin bomb. Love the purple purse. I love that they made the glider purple. We'll say that. That definitely works. And they put red eyes in it. That's cool as well. However, as I thought way back when to right now... The gliders really didn't fit those figures. They were entirely too small. So that's a bit of a bummer. So maybe I can use my giant Spider-Man the Animated Series Toy Biz Wing Bomber. All that stuff. Who knows? But the other thing being, because I'm stickler for that, 
They didn't paint the undersides of the cape. It's supposed to be like a pink kind of color under the orange. But in either sense, I'm happy with it because it's Spider-Man the Animated Series. Also the boots. <laughs> I'm going to nitpick this thing to death. In either sense, I'm glad that we're getting a more animated series inspired Hobgoblin. And then new Spider-Man or Ben Riley Spider-Man. But back in the day when I was collecting the Toy Biz figures, this was the big deal. Remember? Peter Parker... He was, however that went, he was the clone, and then he wasn't the clone, but he is the clone. But he's not the clone. You know how that goes. Ben Riley briefly took over with that now classic 90s suit. But when Toy Biz brought him out, they brought back that suit and placed it over the original Spider-Man. And as a kid, I was like, whoa, what happened to Spider-Man? So this was Ben Riley, and it looks cool. I wish he had his Venom containment gear. <laughs> the only time that this suit really appeared on the animated series was in the final two-parter of the uh, series finale when Spider Carnage showed up. So he kind of makes that Ben Riley suit. Otherwise, it was just Spider-Man with the Carnage uh, symbiote attached to him. So in either case, it works. It's entirely 90s. And it does look good on that new body mold. And then this is, this is one of those where I go, okay, well, I have this figure, but now you've completely redone it. This is the Hammerhead figure. And this... He was actually a pretty big character for a bit, like a season, in Spider-Man the Animated Series, working with Silvermane and all those guys, so he does look good. I gotta give it to him. I like the pinstripes on him. To be honest with you, I don't really care for the brass knuckles. I mean, it's cool that they have it as an alternate fist, but to keep him, like, purely Spider-Man the Animated Series, he won't have those brass knuckles, but he comes with a bat. And honestly, he looks like he stepped right out of the animated series, so that's pretty cool. I wish they would have given him that sheen, right, that his, uh, his animated series counterpart had. That would have been cool, but he looks good on that card. And then this one's cool as well, the Armored Spider-Man, or the Mark, whatever you call it. I, it's the Armored Spider-Man to me. He showed up in the finale of Spider-Man the Animated Series. He was the Peter Parker from a world where he was a multi-billionaire and he had a laser built right into his armor and he had a big spider robot and he's just pretty cool. Now, to say that he is exactly spot on to what we see in the animated series, it's it's utilizing new articulation and such, so I don't think it, it, it deters completely from it. I wish he was just a little bit more armory, I guess you could say, from the old figures that I have and such, but in either sense, this one's a little bit more tactile, I would imagine, right? He just looks a little bit skinny. I think that's what it is. He looks a little bit too skinny in the sense, but and I, I mean, we're just nitpicking. At this point, he comes with two like impact webbing kind of splotches kind of thing. And they did make mention you can attach it, let's say two hammerheads bats. And that's, I, I like it. So anytime you give Spider-Man webbing, please more of that, but he looks good on the card. And then to finally round it out, we're going to be getting Shocker, and you just every time you see this figure or you hear his name, you just get back here, Shocker. That's you got to yell it, right? You got to Christopher Daniel Barnes it up, really get into it. But this is the Shocker, right? Kind of, sort of from Spider-Man the Animated Series. Kind of, sort of, in the sense that it doesn't look anything like his animated counterpart. However, on the back of the old Toy Biz cards for the mock-up, let's say prototype, Shocker did have those kind of classic looking colors. So I kind of like that. It's like a little bit of a wink and a nod to that sense. It's a little bit how they did it with Kingpin. The Kingpin for the retro line actually looks like the old card backs before they redesign him for the animated series. So again, that definitely works for me. And even seeing the artwork and such. So he didn't quite have the tones, the reds and the blacks that the animated series one has. This one is a bit more classic Shocker, so I do like it for that sense. Yes, of course, I'll say all day. I really, really wish that he was more animated and inspired. But in either case, yeah, that's a good-looking classic Shocker. I gotta give it to him on that. I really like the muted yellows. What's my big main problem with this guy? There's no painted black lines. I'm a stickler for that. I don't like it when they don't do it on the Spider-Mans, and I don't like it when they don't do it on the Shockers. But he has, like, gauntlet interchangeable hands which is interesting that's pretty cool and he's got his usual shock blast so in either case i really wish you had the you know spring-loaded launcher that would have been really cool but hey beggars can't be choosers right in terms of shocker <laughs> again if you need any of these they will go for pre-order starting at 10 a.m pacific 1 p.m eastern tomorrow september 
14th. And then moving into the more classic Marvel superheroes card backs, they have revealed quite a few that they have done in the past. They got Hercules and Tigra coming. And then they went on to show us that Falcon, a classic-ish type Falcon. I wouldn't say it's exactly classic. It's kind of a mishmash, but yeah, I mean, for me, I got the one last year. This one is just kind of like, okay, fine, that's cool. The Loki, honestly, same deal. It's, I got the one from the prior wave, whenever that was, a while back, and it looks to be largely the same. He's got his daggers now, but they do look good. It's just the fact of, yeah, it's kind of a little bit too close to the ones that I already kind of have. And spaces get limited these days, right? And then you have Trickster Loki, or Female Loki, that was in the box set at San Diego Comic-Con a few years back. This one looks to be largely the same. I believe she just has interchangeable hands this time around. I don't believe that mine came with that for the last set. I'll have to double check. But in either case, these are three that I'm kind of like, well, it's good for people that missed out on the first time. And if you really need to get them, by all means, they will be going up at a later date. There's no pre-order set for these, but look for them at a later time. And then they went with some Marvel Legends teasers. What would be a Marvel panel without some teasers, of course. The first one, there will be a Legends 6-inch scale figure without legs. My guess for that will be Bonebreaker from the X-Men. Full-on tank dude. That would be awesome. Please make that. <laughs> Teaser number two, there will be another Legends 6-inch scale figure on the oversized Spider-Man Toy Biz blister card. And if you were paying attention to Dan in the background, perhaps he was throwing out some teases some hints i'm gonna go with rhino on that one madam webb would also be acceptable just saying <laughs> there will be at least two characters who have never appeared in toy biz or hasbro legends six inch line who were also featured in marvel universe series 2 the 91 card set i don't have that card set and i'm not going to go through that card set but i'm just going to ask for carrion and Nightwatch to complete the Maximum, <laughs> Maximum Carnage storyline. Even Ryan, he was showing off where it exactly look. Marvel Universe Series 2 card set. So look for that box. Dwight had a tease of his own. He showed off a barrel. I honestly, I couldn't tell you unless... <laughs> I was, I don't know why, I mean, the first thing that came to mind was like a Muckman canister, but that's not right. However, if you have an idea, that would be amazing. And then Ryan showed off his teaser. This looks to be the old backdrop card for the, was it Series 1 Marvel Legends? What is it? The Captain America or Red Skull, something like that. Somebody was commenting down, kind of helped me out, totally blanked on it. But uh, yeah, I think you're spot on. So probably has something to do with the new retro marvel legends god we're already at that point for the 20th anniversary or whatever it is so that looks great i'm super stoked for the spider-mans yes i have my nitpicks and my thoughts on that but you know me huge spider-man animated fan you got me from day one i'll definitely be getting those the other retro superhero ones total just i'm gonna be honest with you it's a pass for me just because i already have those characters i could literally pull them out and show them to you right now but good for those that missed them the first time around but of course let me know your teaser thoughts on everything and i'm gonna leave you guys with that as always drink some great coffee eat some great food but most importantly remember spider-man the animated series is getting bigger and better baby now we just need some spot on character designs from the show and i can finally just go away happy and when you do let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.